Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining tonight's webinar. Our webinars are recorded via WebEx and will be made accessible online after the session. We're now using Cisco WebEx Event Center. If you're having trouble joining, kindly log out of the session and rejoin through the link sent to you by WebEx or by entering our meeting room number 576-321-433 and password is Pakistan122. May we remind attendees that your mics are muted throughout the meeting, but you can catch your thoughts to us through the chat tab. For questions, please type them in the Q&A tab. Tonight's speaker is Dr. Shed Marceline. He is a medical doctor and holds a Master in Public Health degree and a postgraduate diploma in Health Systems Management from Institute of Social Studies, the Netherlands. Dr. Marceline has over 30 years of experience in organizations like provincial health departments, Federal Ministry of Health and Population Welfare, and recently served for 10 years as Health Information System, eHealth, and TRVS Coordinator with WHO Pakistan. He also supervised ADB, World Bank, and USAID sponsored programs. He was a pioneer of National Health Information System in Pakistan, which is currently running in more than 12,000 hospitals and facilities in all over the country. His core competencies are health system development, disease surveillance, and health information systems and civil registration systems. He is also a visiting faculty of a number of reputable national universities in health information systems, e-health, and disease surveillance. He is an active member of, of, of global and regional organizations including AHIN, EcoHealth, OHASA, Rhino, WHO, and HNN. He also carries a number of international publications to his credit. We will now call on our speaker, Dr. Shed Marcelli. Thank you very much for giving. I'm sorry I got late because uh, there was some technical issue in the internet and uh, that's my result. So I'm really uh, sorry for the day and the part. But uh, thanks to Ehan for giving us an opportunity to discuss Pakistan Health Mapping Exercise, uh, which was organized last year. Uh, in cooperation, we uh, coordination of Health, uh, we uh, led this process and it was uh, uh, coordinated, technical support was provided by WHO Pakistan. My presentation would be background objectives and methodology, uh, parameters used for uh, the assessment study, some finding, because, uh, uh, because of the time limitations, I think I will be able to discuss some few major e-health initiatives in Pakistan and barriers and solutions for e-health. As you may know that Pakistan is one of the highly populated countries. It is ranking sixth in the world and with a gross per capita income 4,900. Position density is less than one per 10,000 population. Nursing density per 10,000 population is even less than the physicians. Hospital bed density is 6 per 10,000 population. Mobile users are 68 percent. A good number of population has already started using mobiles. Internet users are about 12 percent, and the connectivity through the cellular 3G, 4G cellular systems is roughly like 26 percent of the population are using. Uh, currently, uh, 3G and 4G cellular uh, Systems are used for internet, uh, for mobile phones, but government is also trying to launch 5G service uh, from next year. Uh, Pakistan, the objectives of this One Health ex this, uh, Mapping Exercise held last year was to identify and document the innovative approaches for addressing national health issues reflected in most compelling MDGs and now the SDG goals because we want you to know where do we stand? What are the innovative approaches being adopted in the country? To get an impression of the important workable EL solutions, best practices, focusing, monitoring, reviewing our actions of further development so that we can see and get a consensus and recommendations for further actions regarding the EL transformation in Pakistan. Study limitations that, as I discussed before, due to time and budget constraints, study could not take account for a very large number of public and private organizations having e-health applications. Only a major known project, because the country is a big country by population, by area, 
and there are several provinces, uh, several cities, and uh, huge walls. Hospital suit could be selected, and uh, we, those also we can go. Uh, we could not go in the depth of these uh, services. We just had a partially, and uh, sometimes a fully uh, uh, full uh, bridge. It was a broad, organized with a broad consultative process with experts and stakeholders. And we used the tool which was adopted to our situation from WHO EL survey tool. Uh, this was coupled with observational visits, focus group discussions, key informant workshops. Roughly 55, both in small, large and small scale e health projects, were reviewed through, throughout the country with 75 professionals engaged during the consultative process. The data analysis and report generation was organized at the Central Ministry of Health Center. So the parameters those were used for the study were uh, uh, national and provincial uh, policy frameworks, if they are available and uh, what are the conditions, legal and ethical frameworks, investments being made in e-health and funding process, the situation of capacity building programs and processes regarding e-health, and tangible e-health programs like uh, or regarding in, in the context of routine and not routine health information systems, telemedicine, EMM health, e-learning, e EHR, and, uh, and e EMR, etc. So uh, regarding the institutional arrangements, the very broadly speaking, it was observed that uh, you see, the, regarding the policy framework, policies exist for national e-government and for the universal health coverage. Government, if there is a full-fledged ministry at the federal level and also at the departments, full department at the provincial level, which called the Ministry of uh, Information Technology and the Departments of Information Technologies, and they, they have already formulated policies in uh, the, and some legislation is there. But unfortunately, no specific national or provincial e-health policy or strategies available, which, are, which is a gray area which needs to be uh, addressed. Legal and ethical framework, legislation for personal and health data uh, do not exist at this stage. Legislation for sharing health data with health, uh, health care uh, services is also lacking. Investments made, there are several e-health projects which are funded by public government, public sector, most of them. There are still private sector organizations, hospitals which are funding, and there are some projects which are programs which are funded to public-private partnership. E-health foundations, and uh, we asked the question whether the uh, current systems can track uh, e uh, uh, essential health and demographic indicators are founded. Yes, it's tracked. Regarding the capacity building programs and processes, there are some uh, e-health pre-service training programs as well as e-health in-service training programs. For uh, pre-service training program, there's the MS program in health informatics uh, in uh, Comsat University. There are certificate programs in health informatics in Liaquat University, Hyderabad. And there are certificate courses uh, which are organized by e-health association of Pakistan to which I am also belong and I'm the vice president of that organization. So e-health uh, uh, in-service training program, not a regular e-health program, but on individual e-health areas like telemedicine, because there are some uh, unit uh, programs on telemedicine, ML, EHR, e-learning. So they are having individual uh, specific, you see that specialty specific programs. So the, the types of e-health services, those are mostly utilized in our country and elsewhere in the earth. Certainly the data collection, aggregation, and reporting like health information systems and ML, uh, disease surveillance and public health surveys, electronic health records, remote consultation like telemedicine and uh, telehealth, decision support systems. So these are the main, as you all know, that these are the main types of, major types of e-health services. Those are uh, used. Maybe there are in addition to this, but these are very uh, popular ones. And health. So I would be talking uh, 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 one by one regarding each of these uh, surveys in the context of Pakistan. Regarding data collection, aggregation, and reporting, we have a national health management information system which is deployed 
in all the public sector government facilities, rural health centers, up to the uh, district health hospitals. Uh, roughly like 12,000 health facilities are reporting every month through this national health uh, uh, and national health management information system. Uh, a web, uh, this data, this information is web-based as a transfer from the DUS sub-district level to the provincial and national level, and efforts are now being made to make it uh, transferable from the health facility itself. But the big hospitals and the, the district and the, the sub-district hospitals, they're already submitting this information through web-based. So gathering information about on eight to 68 standardized priority health indicators on monthly basis. Again, there is a community-based health information system. Uh, currently, roughly like 1 lakh and 20,000 community health workers are deployed in the field and throughout the country. So this, there is, they have a system of data collection on community health, uh, community indicators transferred by in some of the districts through smartphones. And, and mostly, it is also web-based starting from the uh, sub-district, the district, and the provincial and the national level. Uh, again, uh, the, the, the disease surveillance program, which is all the gathering information on, on priority uh, epidemic type of disease, communicable diseases, is deployed in the biggest province in Punjab, which is the 36th district of it. It is, initiated, it is a IT initiative of the government, started uh, after the dengue outbreak in 2011 in Punjab. Data is gathered from all DHQ and THQ Tehsil headquarter hospitals, sub-district hospitals. Roughly like 150 hospitals uh, uh, are reporting from 30 districts on this on a set of indicators. Uh, and there are dedicated IT experts deployed in the hospitals for data collection and for web-based data exchange systems. Uh, it, it helps in early detection and uh, outbreak uh, response systems. And based on this, a release of, there is a release of weekly bulletin to all the stakeholders on the priority uh, epidemic or communicable health problems in the Bronx. This is one of the screenshots from uh, the, uh, you see, district uh, uh, serverless uh, system uh, being uh, deployed in Punjab, and they have said to track this uh, 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 map data out of uh, the cases in the Bronx. Again, there is a, a, a disease early warning system. This is a donor-driven system where, where the main funding came from WHO, main assistance and technical support WHO, and, 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 and USAID in Pakistan, and the provincial health department provided all for coordination. So uh, there was a dedicated uh, disease surveillance officers in the district which are capturing this information from the facilities, from the districts, from the district units on this. This was in initiated in during a, the earthquake and the floods period, the emergency uh, situations, uh, 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 situation in the country. So, but unfortunately, because of some funding and other issues, this uh, system is temporarily on hold. This is again a stat of key tech care for uh, disease, uh, electronic disease early warning system. Again, in the province of Punjab, there's a Punjab anti dengue portal, which has a dengue tracking system, patient portal, early epidemic detection and using the SAT scan, surveillance portal, helpline, dashboards, capturing data from dengue practitioners. This is a screenshot from the dashboard of dengue tracking system because dengue emerged as one of the major epidemics in Punjab a few years back, and the government is very much serious to curtail it. Telemedicine projects, uh, provincial telemedicine training and service center in Holy Family Hospital is working since 2005. So if they have developed a, cur a curricula, the short and long training programs on telemedicine, and they are providing service to adjoining districts of Rawalpindi, like four or five districts. Then again, there is a, a telemedicine program, functional in Sindh, which is based in uh, Jinnah Post Graduate Medical Center and is separating in Sindh district. The Telemedicine Center for the Central Punjab, located in May Hospital, Lahore, is providing services, telemedicine service on the designated services to uh, the population in the adjacent districts. Telemedicine project in northern areas, 
which is supported by uh, German GIG and uh, USAID, is functioning through uh, Comsat University and is uh, is uh, is uh, providing services to the uh, 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 another areas like uh, Gilgit Baltistan and and the uh, uh, Baltistan area. So. Then for regarding the uh, telehealth or uh, use, so government in Punjab has initiated a, 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 a Zimmedar Shahri monitoring project which was started in one district. This has now been uh, scaled up to all the districts of Punjab and uh, they, it caters for health and education services which are deployed in that particular district. So community is asked to, to, to report about the services, about uh, you see, Okay, patient counseling or the arrangements available so the government can, can get, they can lodge complaints and they can launch uh, uh, fumigation requests and requests to this service fumigation for the malaria and dengue and other uh, vector borne diseases. So, uh, so this is one of the uh, examples of telehealth. Uh, Again, telehealth project Aman is a private organization which is a, running a very popular telehealth uh, service which is providing 24 to 7 uh, service on primary health care ailments or uh, uh, MNCH program to, uh, to the population in Karachi and adjoining areas. Uh, M Health Project, uh, the Ministry of Health, in coordination with USAID and Ministry uh, of Health, US and other uh, the, uh, the partner agencies, has launched logistic management information system, which is currently taking stock of vaccines and contraceptives in the public sector health facilities. Tuberculosis program has a tuberculosis treatment compliance program, uh, which is using uh, mobile phones. Uh, for, uh, through uh, the patients are asked to uh, for uh, they are monitored for uh, treatment compliance and uh, for they they, uh, they can uh, interact with the tuberculosis managers or district managers. There is a RMNCHA service tracking program which is tracking service of MNCH and lady health workers and also providing health education. There, is a, there are some examples of use of smartphones for national immunization program and also a CRV, a smart registry program, which is being, has been launched in some of the districts. It is yet to be scaled up because the national uh, 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 registration authority uh, is working uh, for this to, to uh, register all deaths and uh, births in the, uh, in the country through smart registry platforms. Uh, despite all this, there are certainly issues. Uh, the, uh, the main problems are the cohesive systems approach. People talk in piecemeal, they don't talk, talk about system. There is a fragmentation and non regulation of e health programs in the country. Weak coordination and leadership by Ministry of Health because the e health national unit coordinating unit is still not functioning uh, uh, even at the Ministry of Health provincial level. Uh, a standardization uh, and interoperability issues are there because there are there is a growth in e-health projects and plans, but they cannot uh, in, uh, exchange information. That of qualified qualified and experienced professionals is an issue, and insufficient use of because the internet is now available in all the districts of the country almost, so that's still uh, 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 underutilized. And also, uh, we uh, certainly coordination with international e-health organizations to uh, uh, learn lessons from them and to uh, uh, work with them. Uh, uh, the challenges and the way forward, intersectoral co co coordination is important. Electronic data capturing, processing uh, is critical. Promote the co collection of indicators by electronics. So we need to see the multiple possibilities coordination between multiple data systems, non-routine and routine, because the non-routine data systems like survey studies, they do not relate in any way with the routine service, uh, data systems like health information systems, disease surveillance systems, and radio systems. Development of, uh, uh, there is a need for development of 
the national e-health strategy or roadmap for which the coordination with WHO, EHAN, ITU is critical. Capacities in certain areas have to be, there are some centers for in training centers, but there are there is still a room for the building capacities in uh, disease support systems and use of GIS, uh, 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 GIS uh, uh, system and uh, standards and tools and uh, e-learning e systems. Need for learning from international best practice. So these are, uh, this was a quick uh, overview of uh, uh, e-health situation. Thank you very much. I'm not ready for it. All right, thank you for that lecture, Dr. Marceline. Uh, we would like to inform everyone that we are now open for questions. If there are questions, please type them in the Q&A tab. If you cannot find the Q&A tab, please feel free to enter your questions in the chat panel. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Marceline, uh, we have here our first question from Dr. Theo Lippeveld. Uh, the question reads, how are the HMIS and the community MIS linked? Is there interoperability? Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you very much, uh, Dr. Theo, and I'm happy that you are also attending this uh, session. Uh, there are, uh, uh, I mean, the web-based data exchange system, as I told you, has already started up to the sub-district level, and uh, their district health information system, this data is being transmitted. Still, uh, today, there is no, uh, unfortunately, uh, I mean, uh, uh, direct link with the information being collected by the community health workers and, and the facility-based information. But uh, there, there's, uh, there, there, some dashboards have been developed at the federal and uh, at the provincial level where the information from all these data sources are collated and the managers are able to make some comparisons of the information coming from the uh, community data stream and, uh, and the facility uh, data stream. So these dashboards have somewhat uh, e uh, I mean, facilitated this task. But actually, the work, the real work at the back end of collating these two systems is still pending that there is a need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marceline. Uh, here is a question from Dr. Suleiman Atike. He is asking, is data from surveillance systems available for researchers? Yeah, uh, because the real surveillance system that we are we are presenting that uh, the in, inference came from Punjab. Punjab is the biggest province in the country, and they are having, as I said, they have a system through which they have deployed uh, uh, their representatives in each uh, district headquarter hospital and tehsil headquarter hospital. They are collecting information on daily basis and communicating to a central position. In uh, uh, created at uh, the uh, Punjab Health Information Technology Board, so that 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 data is there. They have a website, and that data could be available from uh, that side. I, but, but certainly there would be some limit. Some of the data, they, the, the analyzed information is available, but the raw data, I think we need to ask them for the raw data. All right, thank you, Dr. Marceline. Uh, are there any more questions from our attendees? Please feel free to type them in the Q&A panel and the chat panel. Thank you. Uh, I guess there are no more questions for this session. Um, if, there are, uh, if there are other questions that you would like to raise, um, please feel free to type them in the Q&A panel and the chat panel. Um, if you also come to relate more questions after the session, please feel free to email us your questions so we can forward them to our speaker. Thank you for that lecture, Dr. Marceline. Hope we can have you again for eight an hour and hear more improvements and developments you from your side. Giving me this opportunity to speak to you and other colleagues. And, uh, yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Marceline. Thank you for your time and expertise.
Thank you for joining this webinar, everyone. We'll be posting the materials of this session on Asian.org. Thank you and have a good night.